Well, hello there. I think we'll get underway now. And, uh, and once again, hello and welcome to the inaugural meetup of the Salesforce Marketing Cloud Developers Group for European time zones. Uh, just a bit of background about the group. Uh, so the group was founded by uh, both myself and someone called Matt Cameron um, in Melbourne, Australia, back in 2014. And last year, we decided to expand the group to a virtual presence uh, to uh, really cater for US time zones. And uh, today we have over 600 members worldwide. In this session, and uh, this is our first session for European time zones, um, which will also be available online uh, after, uh, Greg Gifford is joining us and will be presenting on uh, WS Proxy for SSJS or Server Side JavaScript. A bit about Greg. So, Greg's a marketing cloud engineer at DEG, uh, headquartered in Kansas City. Uh, and Greg's probably uh, best known and recognized for his marketing cloud contribution on Stack Exchange. And in fact, I think I checked earlier today, he is the top contributor during the last 30 days um, for marketing cloud tags, where he operates uh, with his Stack Exchange handle, Gorn Tognitin. So Greg's had over 10 years of experience in Exact Target and now Marketing Cloud, um, and is a, a regular speaker at events and has uh, spoken at Salesforce Connections. So um, anyway, I'd uh, just like to hand it over to Greg. Uh, thank you, Elliot, for the introduction. Um, I'm gonna start out going to what do we already have? It's basically just a refresher to make sure everyone's on the same page to understand what we have before we move on to what we will soon have. So I know the meme in the top right is kind of the sentiment is opposite of what it should represent, but I couldn't resist. I, I mean, it's been the state of marketing cloud for years now that APIs, which are very common in most of the web, we really didn't have great access to. So right now, with the scripting available, we have AMP script and server-side JavaScript. AMP script is more of uh, send time personalization, dynamic content, and the interaction with data extensions, whether it's upserting or lookups. Um, then we go to server-side JavaScript, which is much more of the scripting language and used more on script activities and backends on websites. It's split into two libraries, which is the platform and the core library. Platform is more native in the sense of that you don't need to call a separate library, mm -hmm. and it's very, very similar to the capabilities of AntScript. Core functions offer a bit more functionality. Essentially, most of those are similar to SOAP calls. Server-side JavaScript performance, though, is not that great. The platform is, is all right, but most of the time, AMP script is a better solution. It moves a lot quicker than the server-side JavaScript. Core functions, though, they do offer better functionality, but they're much slower. They're even slower than the platform functions because it requires the usage of the core library. So then we move on to the current SOAP API solutions, which we have, again, the core library, which adds extra overhead to the processing calls because the code has to be translated. The data between different language runtimes it's very, even though it offers more functionality, the functionality is limited and there's really no customization of it. It's what you see is what you get almost. Uh, it does not extend to all of the SOAP objects. And it's also, as seems to be a trend instead of marketing cloud, there is very limited response and there's really no meaningful errors or proper documentation on what each function should be doing. Then we move on to AMP script and server-side JavaScript API scripting functionalities. Uh, both languages are strikingly similar inside of layout. They both are almost mirror images of each other. It is very highly verbose. Uh, instead of just going to like a furniture store and asking for a table, instead it's like you come in with the type of wood 
the original location of the tree, how it was cut, who cut it, what finish was used on it, and so on. That's pretty much how AMP script and server side JavaScript API functionality works. And plus, it's difficult to debug because again, no, no real error descriptions, pretty poor documentation. Uh, and with the large amount of code, it's a bigger risk for going through a good 90 lines of AMP script compared to, you know, four or five lines of, of REST API. So now that we know what we have and the limitations of them, how can we do it better? That's where WS proxy comes on. Uh, I figured going in a little quick on what the actual WS proxy means might be beneficial. Uh, the WS stands for WebSocket Protocol and proxy stands for a proxy server. Basically the WebSocket is kind of like the telephone and proxy is like a customer service department. So WS proxy would be you call the customer service department, the customer service department then brings your issue to the business, the business gives a resolution to the customer service, and then customer service brings it back to you. That's essentially how WS proxy works. So what, what is WS proxy inside of more functionality standpoint. It's a new script object for server-side JavaScript that is actually native to the platform, so you don't need to call in the core platform. It makes much more sense with native JavaScript, which makes it a ton more efficient and intuitive to use. Uh, as you can see, it's a WebSocket proxy between SOAP and server-side JavaScript, accessible in all non-send contexts. I'm sure if you really, really pushed, a lot of times Marketing Cloud puts rules and regulations that aren't actually enforced. So you could, but I would never do it. It's going to muck up your email very bad. Uh, it's got the same restrictions as other SOAP API access methods, and it's designed to address the limitations of the server-side JavaScript core library functions and the scripting functions we talked about earlier. How do you use it? It runs off of JSON instead of XML, which in my personal opinion is a huge benefit. I much prefer JSON instead of XML. Uh, API objects use arrays, which rhyme perfectly with JSONs. Uh, it's easier to debug since it's more efficient code and the instructions only provide the what instead of the how and so on that we would have to put previously with the scripting solutions. So what can it do? It utilizes all SOAP API methods. I don't think I need to list every single one. Uh, select client ID method, which is huge. It basically gives you the option to impersonate not just another user, but you can actually impersonate different business units inside of the same proxy. Uh, it also then has the security to make sure that an impersonated user has the required permissions. So in summary, WS Proxy is not a revolutionary change in capabilities or functionalities directly. It's instead a, a much more intuitive, efficient method to accomplish existing abilities. So basically what that means is it, WS Proxy is not like some new like Pansia or crazy wizard spell that, you know, makes marketing cloud like this awesome thing and you know we, we have the keys to the palace it's more along the lines of like the assembly line and that we're taking something that already happens and already exists and then creating a new process that makes it faster and more efficient the efficiency afforded by using ws proxy is not just for code but also processing this will allow you to utilize existing calls and be able to add extra calls with lower processing requirements. Uh, the code complexity is greatly reduced and it's much more in line with JavaScript functions which improves performance and is easier to debug. So now that we know what WS proxy is and what it can do, how do we use it? To start using WS proxy, you create an object to handle the proxying of calls. For instance, Start with 
a variable and then set that variable to script.util.wsproxy, which will call the proxy and create the proxy. Uh, from there, you can then do like we were saying for an impersonation with the client ID, which is uh, the user ID listed below in the, the code and or you don't have to use either one, but you can just use a single one inside of the blow rather than the both, which is then we have the ID, which is the business unit. Then you see start with the proxy name, uh, then you do dot set client ID, and then you do ID as the name, and then whatever ID you're doing is the value, and same with the user ID. From there, you can also clear the previously set IDs if in the middle of the proxy you want to switch or you want to completely reset back to the beginning, you can just do, again, you do the variable proxy name dot reset client IDs and it'll reset the entire thing back. So then after that, you can do something along the lines if like um, you're doing a retrieve or something like that, you'd be required to have columns in there. So this is where you would probably set the columns. And it's fairly simple. It's basic JSON object. And then you would move on to filters. First, we start with the basic filter, which again, it, it probably looks very familiar to a lot of you. It's a basic JavaScript. Then there's complex filters, which again, a lot of you probably are familiar with. It's just left operand, operator, and then it's the right operand. It's much simpler than many times what we have to do with the um, with the scripting solutions. So I'm going to do a very quick overview as most of this is very similar and it's just a simplified version of what already exists. So creating the uh, WS proxy, you start with the proxy variable that we had defined earlier and then you do dot create item and then there's three parameters that are used inside of this. First parameter sets the object type to perform the action on, for example, email or data extension. Second parameter is a JavaScript object, which represents the fields and values to set within the created object, such as the columns that you want to have. Um, you'd put column name, then value throughout however many you need. And then the third parameter is optional, and it includes any extra properties that you want to set to the object itself. So update is very, very similar to create. Update is the variable name, which I, I put as proxy, dot update item. And it also has three parameters. As you'll, you'll see in the slide, all three are almost 100% identical to what was on create. So I wanted to give an example of a reason to use update item, and that example is to do an upsert. So you would be able to pass the options, which would be the third parameter, where you'd have save options, and then you'd have property name, and then you'd have the save action, which is update add, which is much, much more efficient than, than previously, where we would have to use things where it was just update or just add and have to make scripting to choose conditionally. And you have the delete via WS proxy, which again, it's variable dot delete item, three parameters. Notice again, those three parameters seem to follow us around. They're pretty much identical inside of delete as well. And we have retrieve, which retrieve is a bit more in depth inside of the parameters and what it's, what it's able to do. So basic retrieve, oh, oh, sorry, proxy dot retrieve. There is no item after it, it's just retrieve. And then we have a basic retrieve. So the first parameter is the 
the action similar again to what we've had. Second parameter is the columns, which is what I referenced previously, where you'd have that little object there that you would be able to put in the columns you want to retrieve. And the third parameter is the filter, similar to what I showed previously with the simple and the complex filters. Then there's also the advanced retrieve, which is these two parameters, four and five, are completely optional. So there's no, no need to have them if you, what you're trying to retrieve can be solved in inside of parameters one, two, and three. So parameter four specifies the properties on the retrieve option on the request. For instance, you can do things like batch size or anything along those lines to help control how the retrieve is handled. So then we move on to advanced retrieve two with parameter five, which specifies any remaining properties that sit on a request. These properties include the ability to query all accounts, to repeat the last result, repeat all since last batch, etc. So that would be handled as you see below with props equal and then query all accounts true. Now an important thing about this is that in pagination, it can be accomplished using the get next batch function, but be warned that it currently does not work with batch size. Basically, this is where if you put a batch size, the first call will return to 25, but the next batch you pull will be the remaining amount up to 2,500. This is a limitation on marketing clouds and I know that they are working on it, but currently that is the way that this acts. An alternate to using this is to use the continue request to the request ID of your previous call instead of get next batch. I want to give kudos to Sam Whitmore on Salesforce Stack Exchange for this information and workaround. Then we move on to perform. Perform, you'll notice, has four parameters, so it's not the normal three that we've been getting with the past few. The first parameter, again, is the same as the others with setting the object type. Second parameter is the JSON, or I'm sorry, <coughs> JavaScript object, which represents the fields of values to set within the created object. And as I believe I've shown before, but forgot to mention that if there is multiple, uh, whether it's a batch, it's passed as an array of objects, not just a single object. The third parameter is the verb to use when performing the action. And then the fourth parameter is the option is optional and includes any properties to be set up to the object. Now we move on to configure. So there in configure, we go back to the configure item, and then this also has four parameters. The first is again object type. Second parameter is the JavaScript object, which represents the fields and values. The third parameter is again the verb that is used for configure. And then the fourth parameter is again the properties to be set to the object. Execute short and sweet. It's property or proxy.execute, and it's got two parameters. First parameter is an array of name and value parameters. The second parameter is the name of the execute request. Very, very simple, sweet. And then we go to describe, which is even simpler. It's proxy.describe, again, no item added to it. And then the one single parameter it has is either a simple string representing the object type, or it's an array of strings for multiple object types. And then it'll shoot back in response. It'll provide the description of each of these objects. Now, it's over, but what if it wasn't? Bonus level. So in order to show a full version of WS Proxy versus the script API, I wanted to put something quickly together to show it and wanted to run through and explain what exactly it was. 
So I do want to note that the WS proxy code on the left is mock code and it's not to be used as a final product, but I would say that it is 95 to 100% accurate. I just haven't been able to go in and actually run it on side of uh, marketing cloud to verify that it is 100% accurate. So we're gonna start on the WS proxy side. As you'll see, my first variable call is for proxy, and then I set the WS proxy through script.util.ws proxy. Then I move down, since it's an execute call, I set the properties with the variable props. Then I do my array, and inside of that, I have the first object being with the name subscriber key, value my sub key, uh, then name job ID, value there, name list ID, name batch ID, name reason. And then it goes down to the data variable, which is the actual call itself, which does proxy.execute because it's an execute method. And then first parameter there is all of those properties I listed. And then the last one is the object, which is log on some event. Very simple, very easy to read. Then we go to the right where we have the beginning of create object, which is execute request, and then object property, which is then the log on some event. And then we go down there and we've, we have the accounts using the subscriber key functionality. So we create the project, pro, uh, <coughs> let's create the object of the API property. And then inside of that API property, we set subscriber key. And then from that, we then have the next line that sets the value. And then beyond that, we add it to the array. And then we move down to email address, with the same thing where we have to create the object. Then we have to we have set object property of email, then we set the value, and then we add the object to the array. And then we move down to job ID, do the same thing. And then we move down to list ID, do the same thing. And we move down to batch ID, do the same thing. And then we move down to reason. <laughs> it gets very verbose very quickly with a lot of repetitiveness. And you'll see that the lines of code versus of WS proxy versus the script API is drastically different. So that's pretty much everything on my end. Um, I'm opening up to questions if anyone has anything they want to ask or if they want to go back over anything I've presented. Please, by all means, speak up. And thanks, Greg. Thanks for that uh, very informative uh, uh, overview. Um, so, yes, if there are any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and speak up, or you can add them to the chat window if you prefer. Hi, Greg. Um, this is Fran. Thank you for your presentation. I had one question regarding the impersonation uh, feature. Are you saying from one business unit we're able to execute a command in, in a different business unit? Yes, it's able to, similar to how um, Marketing Cloud previously would allow you to imitate and mimic users inside of uh, Enterprise One, and from the top level, you'd be able to go in and get into the different business units below you, and it would basically imitate that, but admin for that business unit, this does the same sort of thing in that when you set the ID and the business unit there, you would be able to go in as if you were that user. Now, in order to do that, you you to have the required permissions and ability to be able to do that. Mostly, you'd have to have an admin level access and be able, I believe you might have to be at the top level to go down and access the business units below. You might not be able to go up. I don't have, 100% verification on that, but I believe that is how it's set up. Yeah, so I, I mean, as explained to me by the um, uh, the, the inventive WS proxy, that uh, you know, it, it does go and uh, honor those um, those permissions that you know, the uh, that is you know has to be an API user for that specific business unit in order to go and access it. But uh, 
Um, yeah, I, I think as, as long as, you know, they're set up as a user with API access for that business unit, then they'll be able to go and use it. Um, yes, definitely API access is needed. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I apologize for not adding that. That's good. All right, thank you. Um, as a, maybe I'll ask a question and, and answer it at the same time. So something that um, people are, often ask me, say, wow, this is great. Now, um, what about the REST API? You know, <laughs> are we going to uh, see a similar thing for the REST API? Um, and uh, uh, the, the official answer is that um, the REST API is not supported at this time. Uh, however, if you can read bef between the lines and uh, you know furnish with uh, many forward-looking statements. I think this is something that we may you know expect to see in the very very near future. Um, but uh, again, I can't speak on behalf of Salesforce. But uh, I, that um, uh, you know just bear in mind that uh, um, this is, as I understand, only the beginning of uh, WS Proxy. They've got um, many. Uh, exciting plans um, for the very near future. So, you know, watch out. Any other questions? No? Um, so, uh, if you do have any more questions on WS Proxy, or in fact, any mark technical marketing cloud questions whatsoever, I do encourage you to get over to Stack Exchange. Stack Exchange is just a fantastic community, specifically Salesforce Stack Exchange. It's a fantastic community to go and um, uh, 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 find out what other um, issues people are having and, uh, and quickly find answers and, uh, and uh, and obtain answers. So, you know, I've learned marketing cloud, not only for using the platform myself, but actually also spending um, a large amount of time on Stack Exchange here. It's just a fantastic community and fantastic resource. And that um, you might observe from the new, um, new developer uh, um, landing page for, for marketing cloud it actually directs you to Stack Exchange. So let me just go and pull that up if I can. Uh, the the Marketing Cloud Developer Center. I'll just go and, uh, and share that now. In fact, um, can I just go and ping this to you, Greg? And if you can just go and uh, pull this up in your browser, is that okay? Sure, no problem. Okay, I've just gone and set that in the, in the chat window there. And I'll just go and post it publicly as well, just so that you've um, got it all to your uh, fingertips. This is a, uh, it's a new page. It's more of a landing page than a than a website. Um, but uh, what's interesting, once Greg brings that up, is uh, um, you'll notice that there's developer forums down the bottom. And if you click on that, that takes you to Salesforce Marketing Cloud Stack Exchange. Um, so click through and uh, just click on top users, Greg, just to kind of humor me there. On the, on the tag, no, no, just under tag questions. So down left a bit, left a bit. So oh, you missed it in that, in that highlighted panel at the top. <laughs> there we go. Top users. There we go. So you can see, um, just to point out that uh, Greg is very prolific. There he is. Number, number top, number one in the last 30 days. Um, kind of, I'm, I'm trailing not too far behind. But uh, anyway, uh, like I said, I mean, both Greg and I um, and Adam Spriggs, we, we devote an awful lot of time uh, to this forum. And yeah, if you have any other WS Proxy questions, marketing cloud questions in general, head over here as your first stop. Well, thanks again. Um, this session will be available um, uh, as a recording. Um, and uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, seeing you virtually um, on future uh uh, events and so our next one is actually scheduled for November and that's going to be on a uh, Heroku co connector for Salesforce marketing cloud that is the ability to go and um, uh, uh, furnish uh, data extensions uh, to Heroku apps so look out for that okay and thanks for coming <laughs>